Hi, Eureka family. This is your host, Christopher Decker of the Eureka Moments Only podcast. Join me today as we have a conversation with Rasha, the founder of Toucan Ventures and chair of The Nest. Today, we're going to uncover Rasha's Eureka Moments. This special episode is sure to educate, entertain, and inspire. Welcome, Rasha. Hi, thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure. I'm uh, just sat here in my I like to call it my little tree house in London. Uh, and you very, very kindly reminded me that I'm actually in my nest, which is so true. <laughs> uh, in my little nest in London, looking out over the Thames. And it's really nice. The sun is kind of calming down very slightly and it's kind of bustling on the leaves there. And um, yeah, it's been a very long but fruitful day. That sounds like quite a view today and the perfect scene for this conversation. Um, first things first. When are you going to finally walk the Great Wall of China? Oh my gosh! Well, could you join me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's. let's I need go. to have. Let's do it. Let's do it. I want to have. Um, we need to have a good collective of people. Um, gosh, the Great Wall of China has been on my bucket list for. Oh gosh, for too long. Um, but it sound, It's. It was something that I remember saying to myself when I was quite young, around the kitchen table, saying you know, I would love to go into education, but the other thing I would really, really like to do, apart from climb a mountain, which thankfully I did do with a big group of um, girlfriends, was also to do, um, do um, was to climb uh, or to walk the Great Wall of China, um, insofar as it's a country that has always fascinated me, mm. and also um, a country um, that, has you know in terms of inspiration in terms of um the culture has deeply deeply fascinated me but also it's just something that you know you could imagine starting on one end and ending up on the other having mm. gone on a really wonderful journey and you really want to go with a really fantastic group of friends that mm. you know um you could go on that journey with and you don't know how long i don't know how long do you know how long it would take to to walk the Great Wall of China? I'll put it this way. Something you can like do a marathon on the Great Wall of China and I think there's still room left over. <laughs> oh, wow. So that's like, so that, so is that long or not so long? Let me look this up. Uh, that seems pretty long to me. So uh, let's, let's look this up for our listeners today. We're going to see how long the Great Wall of China is. How, I mean, to do, how long would it take to... To climb the Great Wall of China. To, okay. It's, this is going to take you a long slightly, time. Did I do that slightly trump -esque Forgive me, China. I didn't mean to do that, guys. I meant to do it like China. You know, European style. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty funny. China. It's going to take you a long time because it's 13,171 miles. Wow. Okay. So, that, so that's going to take you on a long journey. And that's going to take you, you're going to have to have a really good gaggle of friends. 21 kilometer, 21,000 kilometers. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Can you paraphrase it into days? How, how many days would that take you to walk? Do you know? Um, well, it depends. Okay. Let's say every mile would be 20 minutes and you would be able to walk three miles an hour for, let's say, five hours a day. So three, 15 miles a day. So let's say 13,000 divided by 15 would be 867 See, I, I'm days. I'm in awe that you can do that. <laughs> you see, I'm in awe, Christopher, that you can do that. I would just go, oh, it's in, in the bracket of that time. That you can actually pinpoint that in that amount of time. I... I kind of do that whole, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Unbelievable mathematics. Well done. That's awesome. Wayne's world. That's what I do to you. Wayne's world. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Awesome. I, I think you would have to pick a section of the Great Wall of China. And to bring a great group of friends with you. And my next question for you is interesting. So with a name like Toucan, I take it you like animals. Love animals. Absolutely love animals. Um, 
thankfully I'm on the board of the zoo here in London, you know, as you do, mm -hmm. it's one of those things. Um, we've got um, two gorgeous dogs. Um, you know, how can you not love animals? Mm. You know, we are, we are part of our ecosystem. Mm. You know, we are, we are, hum you know, to be human is to be, you know, is to be part of the greater ecosystem is to care for, nourish and protect the greater world. Um, you know, you have, to, you know, how can you not love animals? How can you not love um, the biodiversity of, of, of our, of the world? Um, mm. You know, I, you know, and I guess the reason toucan, the word itself resonated, it, it oscillated in the right way for me just because it was, it was a positive word in, in so far as it was, if you break it down, it's two can, it's mm. a you can. And it was a very positive, you know, sounding word as in you can do it. And the, the company that I started, and I daren't even put a number on it years ago, um, was to help entrepreneurs um, get started. And when around the same time, lots of other companies were getting started as well, their kind of, I guess the names that they chose were very, I guess, you know, what they say is what they had on the tin, which was very you know, get started for you, or, you know, it was very practical. I guess ours stood out a bit because it was a bit more, I guess, positive, uplifting and upbeat. And, you know, it was very, you can, you, who can, with two can, it was, the branding was very bright and positive. And, um, but to go back to, to loving animals, absolutely. I mean, how can you not? I mean, you know, uh, you know, it's, you know, my, 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 my heart grows three times bigger just thinking about the question that you've given me, <laughs> you know, to be, um, you know, we are to be part of the planet, mm. you know, we, we are, we are only, you know, we are a tiny, we are, part, we play a part alongside all the other creatures on the planet. We're here to protect other species. I mean, you know, we, you know, humankind are here to protect the rest of the world. Um, you know, and so far as, you know, we, we, we form, you know, we're here as a, you know, it, it's, all, it's all in such a delicate balance. I don't know if I'm making any sense at all. You're absolutely um, making sense. I can feel your heart from the other side of the planet, this inter. Oh. <laughs> Right, this interconnectedness, this, this, this. We are guardians of other species. We are yes, here that's the to protect. Word. Right, and and to to have such a a playful imagination in this serious world of investing, I think it says a lot to 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 who you are in a in a very in a in a very good way, because you're helping creatives get their business out in front of influential business luminaries with with toucan correct and and you have this new nest initiative as well no thank you so the nest is our is the online education um place where people can come and download the application and and learn how to be an entrepreneur that's mm. really it and you can come you can download the app and learn and it's a library of information of from world-class um, entrepreneurs giving stellar advice to other entrepreneurs about how to become an entrepreneur and you know imagine walking into a library and saying oh gosh i wish i and having all of the best world-class advice at your fingertips about how to be an entrepreneur but having that in the, in you know like sunshine in your pocket in your pocket walking around every single day that's what the nest is and that's really what um, we wanted to create with the Nest application. And, you know, in a world like today, when everyone's wanting to start a business and they really want to know, oh gosh, where do I get the very, very, very best advice about marketing or the very, very best advice about fundraising or the very, very best advice about this or that about my business, which is, has come from the very best source, well, the Nest would be that. Mm. Much like 
I want to I want to speak uh, again about a, a bit about your spirit of being a guardian and, and a protector and but you you are you are all about helping. I I can I I can see that and I I found a campaign that you helped with called the Change a Girl's Life campaign. You did the an, an 8-mile walk. Um tell me about this. This you know for for girls coming from, you know, challenging situations. Um, you, you are on the board of playing for change foundation. I mean, there's a lot of giving back in, in your life today. There, there, there always has been, and there, there always should be. There's so much incredible, there's so many wonderful initiatives I mean, in the world. And it, it's about how can we best collaborate and support, um, to bring as much, bring about as much positive change in the world as humanly possible. And the women, I mean, I do a lot of work with the Princess Trust, with women supporting women. There's an incredible collection of awesome women there. And, uh, you know, there are an incredible constellation of stars there that we've kind of, um, that work together to, to bring about incredible change. The same with Save the Children. And that, I think that's the walk you're talking about there, which is really, that was really, really brilliant. And, you know, we just, came together there just to and this would have been just pre-covid what's going to happen now post-covid can we do any more of these things mm. <laughs> i don't know um you know pre-covid we were able to do lots of incredible things like travel or plan to travel to go to china we were planning this year to climb kilimanjaro with the princess trust mm. and bring this incredible constellation of women to the top of kilimanjaro to raise efforts exactly for this cause. And I'm looking in my diary, it's just in front of me now, my little green diary, I write everything down in a file of facts and we were going to go on the 15th of October. We were going to summit Kilimanjaro, there it is, in my diary. Mm. <laughs> and it was an eight day climb, I can tell you, it takes eight days to climb Kilimanjaro. And no longer, unfortunately not. We're not doing that anymore because of COVID. And all these wonderful initiatives that we had up our plan, uh, up our sleeve, are are on hold. Mm. But our hope, we hope and pray that next year we can gather the same um, collection of women and go up again stronger. And you know, we'll see what happens. But you know, we have you know, maybe it's Kilimanjaro, maybe it's the Great Wall. Who knows? <laughs> dream big yeah, why not i mean if, if we've all been locked up or as they're calling it now in england they're shutting down not locking up mm. apparently this is as of today so we're being shut down for a couple of weeks mm. um, so if we're being shut down why don't we you know come out and do plan something really brilliant for next year mm. having those things to 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 look forward to that pull us into uh, a brighter future despite whatever circumstances we are we are in today like like climbing mount kilimanjaro walking the great wall of china there there's there there's so much out there now aptly the the name of this show is eureka moments only and i would define a eureka moment as a turning point a major aha moment, a discovery, something where you made a pretty major decision. Have you had any Eureka moments? Anything come to mind? Eureka is such a good word, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's such a fabulous word, Eureka. Gosh, um, Eureka moment. It's usually when you're sitting in the garden, when you're very quiet, when you're contemplative and you're thinking about something quite other and mm. it suddenly hits you. I think that's when you get your eureka moment. That's usually when these moments tend to happen. And Do you have a garden that you like to sit in and, and think about other? I do. Um, I also like to walk a lot and, and run a lot. 
Um, but usually it's when I'm walking that I tend to have these moments and I'll try and note them down in a diary. And then I look back at them and think, okay, well, what, which ones can I, will bring the most help? Which ones will be the most useful? Which ones are just, I guess, blue sky thinking, <laughs> mm. you know, which ones are just passionate, colorful, or, um, you know, which ones can be implemented really. And, you know, but it's usually when I'm walking or when I'm in a garden, I'm looking at nature and I'm just very, very still. And yeah, I'd say it's probably around those times that I've, I've had my, my most, I'd say profound moments. Are there any questions that you ask yourself? Is it coming out of the silence? Or are you asking any specific questions, something you're trying to solve? I don't know. That's a, that's a wonderful question, Chris. I guess I'm looking, I'm, I'm guess I'm thinking about finding within the, I guess it's, I don't know if it's necessarily that I'm looking for answers in so far as the, the quietness brings solutions. Hmm. And, you know, it's through the solace that clarity comes. And, you know, I'd also brings, I'd, I'd also say that pre COVID life was very much, was a bit more, you know, you'd have a lot more to balance and a lot more balancing plates. Post COVID life, I think we've all got to be a bit more contemplative and a bit more retro, you know, a bit more, um, we've been able to be a little bit calmer. And I really hope that this kind of, you know, London's become a bit more of a village feel, which is, I really welcome it. I think it's really quite fantastic. And, you know, I don't think, I think every person I've spoken to about that really welcomes that slightly slower pace, which is quite nice. And it allows people to be a little bit more quality over quantity. Um, and, you know, I, I really welcome that. Hmm. There was a formula that I'm going to break down for our listeners today that you kind of gave to us, which was instead of speeding up, if you want the Eureka moment, slow down yeah. or get out of your normal environment and do less move your body it, it it does involve a physical replacement <laughs> and then as thoughts and ideas come maybe not focusing so much on trying to solve something instead of letting the the that change that gap that silence bring bring the answers to you and then what i also heard was recording those in a diary a notebook a journal something and then evaluating those against certain criteria afterward, but letting anything kind of be okay in the moment and then critiquing, the, critiquing it afterward and then choosing which ones you want to move forward with because we might have some ideas that are a bit too blue sky, as Rasha puts it, when I think what she means is perhaps overly ambitious what, what what would you define blue sky as my goodness uh it depends because it could be you know let's say one day it may be you know a few lines of poetry which may be just very um you know soul soothing and it may be very helpful just that day that that needed to be written mm -hmm but not necessarily very helpful from a practical perspective from the company. Next day, I may have found and settled on a solution that may be much more practical from the company perspective. So that I'll choose to share, but I won't choose to share that with, you know, say the poetry with everybody. Mm. Um, so, or I may have, or I may have found, or I may do a doodle that, that may end up, as part of the branding 
one day, but sometimes the, the doodling may not necessarily always end up part of the branding. It just depends, you know, what, where, where it's going. And, you know, mm. our CEO is really fantastic. He really kind of gets it and he kind of really understands because we both speak the same language. Um, he'll kind of go, okay, well that really, you know, falls within, I can really get that to the creative team. Well, that's more kind of, that's more for your personal thoughts. <laughs> R- RC. And, um, Oh yeah, <laughs> completely. He's like, that's for your diary. That's for your personal thoughts. That, that that's really sweet, but um, that's not really for um, that's not really for the creative team. They don't need to see mm. that. Um, or or I'll go, hey, I've drawn like, I've drawn this. Do you think they should they could take it on? And he'll go, yeah, it's quite cool actually. I kind of get, I kind of dig that. Um, or sometimes he'll go, no, I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> hmm. Wow, I mean, you're really in touch with your imagination, and then. To be able to turn that into a, a, a process systematically with with a team that could take it to another level, I mean, it's it the, this practice of letting your mind kind of be free, right? Taking it out of a self-imposed prison cell and and letting it letting it be free for just a moment. I dare you, listeners. I dare you to set your mind free. Rasha, do you have any closing thoughts today? Anything that you'd like to share with others that are going through this COVID time with their business? They may have had a loss. Their business may be absolutely on fire. They're making more than they ever thought they could. Um, Creatives might be writing the next best-selling novel. Filmmakers may be writing a script for the next blockbuster. I mean, there's so many people listening to this. What would you say to them? I would say that they need to follow their, their instinct, their heart and their soul. Mm. And this is the time to do that. Um, we've never in history had a more exceptional time for creativity mm. and we're exceptionally fortunate. Don't lose it. Grab that baton and go with it. Don't be afraid. Um, it is a terif- It can be seen as a terrifying time, but see it as um, as an opportunity to really set your creativity free and and allow the world to to witness your exceptional creativity and um, and don 't be afraid of it um, take each day um, and, um, and just just keep just keep you know, just keep just keep creating keep creating keep creating creating and others will soon see just your exceptional exceptional creation development and they will soon fall to just I can't be a that's what I say. Just don't be afraid. Hmm. Don't be afraid. Uh and this has been a, a wonderful discussion, Rasha. Thank you for your time investment today. Welcome to the Eureka Moments Only family. For our listeners, go check out what she's doing with Toucan, with The Nest. And that's it.